Hey guys, it's Car Guy 11 and today we're going to do a new type of live stream. We're actually going to feature one of a uh, subscriber's car and a good friend of mine. And um, I'm going to talk about his car. I, I track with him. In fact, that's where I met him at uh, Pit Race on the track. Um, so uh, we're going to talk about his car, what mods he's done to it, and also answer any questions you guys have about track driving, um, you know, car prep. Um, and then you can, uh, you know, ask questions about my car as well, his car. Um, and uh, any questions you have on, um, you know, racing in general, autocross as well, uh, road racing. And um, didn't even ask a little bit about drag, but we don't do that all too often, so... But as we uh, wait for some people to get on here, um, just want to remind you that these live events and actually all my videos are available on podcasts through iTunes. Uh, just search for Car Guy 11 on iTunes and you can listen to these uh, and or watch them actually through iTunes as well. Um, Definitely subscribe to the channel and follow me on Instagram. And I post all of the uh, events I go to, including track days um, and all of the live streams. Uh, you'll get uh, advance notice of when I'm going to have a live stream so you can participate. Um, all of Chad's info, his YouTube channel, Instagram, and his build on his Camaro 1LE uh, there's links below. Um, he's on the Camaro uh, five forms and he has his whole build list there. So you can get more info on everything he's done to the car. Um, let me just make sure this is going here. We've got a couple people on. I just want to make sure everyone's seeing okay. All right. So um, anyway, we're going to start off uh, introducing you to Chad. Hey, Chad, Hi, how's it going? Hey, how about yourself, Marco? Good, good. Uh, thanks for joining us today. We're going um, to look at your car, see what you've done. And like I said, uh, I met you on the racetrack. So that's yeah. a good place to uh, find friends, that's especially right. car friends if you're looking for it. I've actually met another friend of mine, Tom Gear, at the racetrack as well. So um, people are pretty much uh, very friendly uh, when you go to these events. And even if you don't have, if you're not even racing and you just want to go and spectate, uh, just hang out in the pits, talk to the guys, and um, you know, you never know. You'll you'll find a friend, and uh, they'll help you along if you want to get started. So uh, definitely a good thing to do if you're just getting started and you want to find out more about the sport. Um, just just attend event. Don't even race. So oh yeah, yeah. So so anyway, what we have uh, Chad runs right now is a 2014 Camaro One LE, right? That's correct. Yep. So why don't you uh, tell us like when you bought it and um, did you buy it new and you know what options do you have on it? Sure. Thanks, Marco. Thanks for having me. Uh, I uh, got interested in the 1LE late 2013. Uh, I had a 95Z28 for 14 years prior to that, tracked it, road, or, uh, street raced it, and uh, drag raced it. But uh, road racing is where it's at. This is a blast. Uh, I actually ordered the car. Uh, my dealership knew I was interested, and they had gotten an allocation. The owner of the dealership the, at the time had a 13 Inferno Orange Metallic 1LE. And uh, so I, I, they gave me the allocation. I ordered it exactly how I wanted. It's a 1SS with the NPP, which is the dual mode, as many of you Camaro enthusiasts know. And I got the Recaros. And mm. basically... When the Gen 5 came out, there were, I liked it. I thought it was pretty cool. But there were little things that bothered me. Uh, and, and over the years, they, they slowly fixed them. And uh, in 14 was pretty much per
perfect because one of the one of the things I didn't like was the seats and the Recaros are are fantastic. So, well so the Recaros were an option and uh, oh, starting in 2014. Okay, cool. Correct. Yes, they were two thousand dollar option. And how about the NPP? Uh, that was not standard either. Not on no, not standard on the SS because this is a Camaro SS, uh, and the one LE is an option. Uh, it, you actually had to order the the dual mode exhaust right there's okay. that that's how you tell it's a dual mode with the four tips and there's a butterfly valve tucked up under there you can see it there on the right hand side uh, right and realistically it's an awesome sounding exhaust from the factory uh, yeah we're gonna we're gonna have to do a sound clip later sure. uh, of the exhaust uh, sure. yeah definitely there's a picture of the video of the Recaros here, and it has the microfiber suede Alcantara uh, and on it. I love that it has the uh, harness uh, openings. So if you yes. wanted to do a uh, harness bar, that that's very uh, convenient. There, that's that's awesome. Yes. Yep. And uh, yeah, just the the. Th it was a Camaro SS with a one LE option, the dual mode exhaust and the Recaros. And that was it. And I had every intention on tracking it at a minimum. These cars are heavy, but they don't feel like it. And, uh, yeah, I picked it up. I believe it was June, uh, second. It was a Monday. Uh, dealer was pretty cool. Uh, uh, Jim Cover was the current owner of the dealership at the time. Uh, it's now Memorial Highway Chevrolet. Jonathan Beskid was my salesman, great guy. And uh, Lewis Skiles was the sales manager. And uh, they, they were great, great to work with and appreciate everything they, they did. And uh, yeah, and it uh, looks great. Yeah. Black wheel, the black wheels, um, that was standard as well, right? I mean, yeah. I know those aren't those yeah. factory here's, wheels right there. But. Here's one of the the factory wheels. This is actually one of the rear wheels. And I, uh, from uh, bone stock, the car comes with 285, 35, 20s all around. But the, the wheel sizes are different front to rear. The, the fronts are 10 inch wide where the rears are 11 inch. I actually do have the 305s on here, at, just as the ZL1 would have. Uh, and I did that primarily because the, I, I got two of the tires along with a, a, a purchase of the other tires. And uh, it looks a little bit better with the wider tire, but performance-wise, it, it, the car is probably better with the 285s all around. Mm. Uh, the 1LE option comes with those 285 Goodyear Supercar F1 G2s. Uh, same wheel and tire that comes on a ZL1. But like I said, they put, they put the 285 on the rear. Uh, the black hood, matte black hood, the red calipers uh, on a normal SS, they are not red. Okay. You can see this is the rear one here. Um, the spoiler, black spoiler, and I have uh, Aerosport Concepts wicker bill on it. It comes with the suede steering wheel. And the shifter. Is that a pain to keep um, clean or nice? I heard that sway gets kind of matted down after, yeah. you know, use, especially on the racetrack. Right. You sweating. have to stay after it. Um, when I wash the car, I'll take a damp rag and wipe it down. And then I use a blade brush. I go on mm. Amazon to help fluff it up, and it works great. Okay. Uh, it's not that bad. You know, I have. You I don't have, wear gloves at all 20... while you're racing. I used to, but not anymore. Um, I, I think because of the, the suede that I, I don't need that extra grip. The, the suede does offer better grip. Uh, on your oh, and then... Autonut has a question. Is the hood vinyl? Oh. Is it properly painted underneath? I believe it is yes. silver underneath. And uh, mm -hmm. cue the open hood because I can show the, the yep. wrap wraps around right here. 
Okay. So it is. A lot of guys have pulled the wrap off, and it is the body color. Gotcha. And uh, the one OE option also comes with the strut tire brace, as you can see there. Nice. And I'm probably miss. Oh, it comes with the 391 rear gears. Mm-hmm. And the TR6060 six speed. With is, uh, it has cooling. The the transmission has its own it, cooling. Is that the same transmission in the regular SS? I do not think so. It is the same transmission that's in the Z28. Same ratios. But okay. I don't think it is the same transmission that's in the SSs. I'm pretty certain that that's, that's the case. Okay. Um, Different ratios, slightly. Mm -hmm. 266 first gear. Okay. The 391s help uh, a lot, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's great. All right. Yeah, I think that's pretty much the stock set up. And then obviously mm -hmm. you have a ton of mods done. So sure. um, why don't you uh, yeah, go through um, some of your mods? Sure. Well, let's start off with the powertrain. I didn't do much here. Uh, I did the Z28 cooled air intake, as you can see right there. Um, and does that um, require a tune? It does not, but I also got a tune. And, a, and I have a ported throttle body, Bo White. It's on a Camaro 5 Forms. Uh, does a great job. Uh, he, he did the, the throttle body. The Z28 cold air intake, a lot of guys uh, are yay or nay on it. Uh, my, my outlook was it looks great for one. Two, it's validated General Motors part. It's robust. Uh, you know, some guys claim that maybe other cold air intakes get, get you a little more power, but realistically, how much? Maybe three, four horsepower. I'm not looking for that last, you know, I'm not exploiting every little bit out of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I have a uh, Apex, Apex oil catch can here, which I think yep. Apex is no longer in business, but I thought that was the best looking one. Um, it looks that's it. Looks similar to my elite engineering one I have on the Corvette, okay, but mm -hmm. and that's it for the powertrain. I didn't do much. I, I so was it I when they tuned it? Was it just like a, a can tune, or it was on a dyno? It was on a dyno. It was Brian Hurd. Oh, okay. Uh, he he uh, was local to us here. I'm in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, and he he grew up uh, in Punxsutawney and lived in Indiana. Pennsylvania, where uh, Indiana University of Pennsylvania College is. And a great guy, always took care of us local guys. Uh, he, he now lives in Vegas. Uh, he's a great guy. He was one of the, the guys, if not the guy, that started PCM for less. And he's been around tuning General Motors vehicles for a long time. And like I said, he's a great guy, uh, very great to work with. And uh, I'd recommend him to anybody. So what? And, and he, he. What kind of power go ahead. change did you get with the tune? Um, I mean, he tuned it for the intake, um, but uh, I don't know. That also asks. There's no headers or catalytic, correct? Correct. Yeah, it's it's all all bone stock except for the throttle body, the tune, and the cold air intake. It is 404 rear wheel horsepower SAE. Hmm. Uh, Picked up about 25 horsepower. 25 so horsepower. 25. So he, um, yeah. I mean, I'm assuming you didn't get all that from the intake, but it's just no. from the tune itself. Is it tuned right. uh, uh, to, to 93 octane, or you can use 91 as well? Uh, I think a minimum 91. That's what I always use. Okay. Yeah, I don't I don't use anything less than that. Right. I've never had any issues. It, it performs great. Um, the durability is there. You know, I'd love to do headers or an easy 30, 35 horsepower increase. But then the car gets a little bit more raw, and I, I'm getting older, and I really enjoy the refinement. And the, mm -hmm. the, the, at 404 rear horsepower, it may be about 450 flywheel. So it, it yeah. will spin the tires. You know, you followed me, you, especially this last truck, last truck day. It'll spin the tires coming out of the hole there at pit race. You're right. And, but, and, uh, Actually, I forgot to mention um, my last video. Uh, hopefully, you guys got to see it. Um, Chad was the one in front of me um, 
most of the time. So <laughs> I was chasing him, and uh, yeah, we were we were going pretty pretty good good together. And um, yeah, yeah, my That's my right. Corvette dynos. I haven't dynoed mine, but right around four hundred at the wheel as well, maybe just okay. under. So yeah, similar power. Uh, of course, you have a little more weight, but um, yes. Mm -hmm. But as far as that takes care of the powertrain, uh, meat and potatoes to me now, I mean, it, it, back in the day when I had my 95, it was all about power, power, power. But then, you know, I opened my eyes to uh, superb chassis dynamics. Uh, we'll start off with the wheels and brakes here. I have uh, picked up this year some Forge Line GA1Rs, open lug, no cap, deep, 19 by 11 up front, 19 by 11 and a half in the rear, just trying to mimic the Z28 wheel sizes uh potenza bridgestone potenza re 71r tires all around 305 30 19s and uh the car looks awesome i've got yep. a ton of compliments on it those uh, are the uh same awesome. forge line wheels uh street speed 717 has on on his corvette he got yeah. the, with the drag setup so yeah. pretty cool nice it, definitely nice nice setup there yeah, they look great. They're super lightweight. The factory wheels are almost 30 pounds, and these are the rears on this on my digital bathroom scale was 20 pounds in the rear and 22 for the front. So they're they're mm -hmm. a lot lighter. The the Bridgestones are 31 pounds or so. So they're still on the heavy side compared to like a Michelin tire. The Michelins are always lighter. Uh, right. Uh, but um, hey, we have another brakes. question. Sure, real go quick. ahead. Uh, Steve Wentling asks, are you going to ceramic coat the paint? I did the uh, the, the wrap. You did the know. clear wrap, right? Yeah, the clear wrap. The ceramic coat, that would have been great to do right off the bat, but the car's, uh, at this point, I'm not going to bother, but I don't know if you could see, there's a little bit of the line there. Mm -hmm. And I did it myself, and it was an eight-hour job. It was... Uh, Boy, that's that's a tough job, the clear bra. Right. And I also did it on the mirrors and the gills. The gills, if, if anybody, I mean, you're not going to find too many Gen 5s that are brand new anymore. But maybe this is also, the because the gills here. Yeah, that's you know, tough. Sticky tires. They just, they just throw the stones. And within 100 miles, my gills here were starting to get peppered. So I protected them with some wrap air. If you buy a car that you have a lot of passion for and want to keep it looking new, get spend the money and get the clear bra. Uh, the ceramic coat is great, you know, in, in other ways. I'm not sure how much protection it offers. I think it does a little bit, but uh, the clear bra is definitely a great investment. But that, that's a great question. I know my brother-in-law who uh, and my sister-in-law, they both have Cadillacs, and, and, and he's done the, the ceramic coat on uh his ats at least his okay. previous ats i'm sure he has it on his current ats uh, so it, it's amazing what they keep coming out with all right uh, back to your brakes <laughs> sure uh, i uh i did the it's a popular mod the zl1 has a six piston brembo caliper with a two-piece rotor <clears throat> the the, the same caliper is also used on the previous generation CTSV and uh, the current C7 VET Z06 without the mm -hmm. carbon ceramic brakes. And the, the right. caliper that's used on the Corvette is a vented piston. And that's what I bought. I bought the, the, the Z06 non-carbon ceramic caliper. And I painted them. They did come red, but I wanted the one LED car. I didn't want the Corvette M or Corvette uh, lettering on there. So I painted them and just used did, decals. Did you I got paint off them? eBay. Did you just strip them all and, and repaint, or how did you? How did you? Do no, that? I, I just I just scuffed the the factory paint down. Got got rid of the gloss uh, to get a good mechanical bond, and I used I don't remember what brand it was of uh, high temperature brake caliper paint. And okay. um, actually, the decals have discolored a little bit. The the calipers have darkened a little bit. But um, this is not a show car. You know, I, I I use it hard, 
at the racetrack. And I'm not so concerned about perfection as far as the calipers staying as pretty as they once were, but, uh, rotors are the two piece ZL one rotor. I do have new rings sitting in the garage. I, I bought some DBA T3 5000 rings that are actually the same ring that that same C7 Corvette Z06 uses. Uh, I just have to transfer this hat onto that ring. The hat on the Corvette is a different offset, but uh, some guys on the forums have uh, experimented and uh, it's, it's a great upgrade. Yeah, definitely. And you have, um, you're replacing them because you did see some uh, cracks, heat cracks. Correct? Yeah, let's see if we can get in there. It might be kind of hard to see. But yeah, with repeated heavy use, the and it's normal, the rotors are going to start to crack. I might be able to get another track day on it, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty much done for the year. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll change those out this, this winter. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the, the, the pads... Yeah, like go ahead. Yeah. Sure. Uh, the, the, pads the, are... uh, the, the noisy pads that uh, sound like a yeah. boss house. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, they're Raybestos <laughs> ST43s. Now, Raybestos has a line of racing pads, and that's just one of the compounds. Uh, same compound that the NASCAR Cup guys use at intermediate tracks. And they wear fantastic. <clears throat> They make dust like any good pad should. The Marco will disagree a little bit there because he <laughs> loves his pads. But uh, they do make a ton of noise, uh, even in cold, like uh, coming down. When I'm on the corner light here. Coming down that little grade there, uh, it sounds like a school bus or a UPS truck is coming down. And, and I know my neighbors probably hear it because uh, it's kind of hard to be quiet. And their cold bite actually is, is excellent uh, for – uh, a racing pad. So I've, I've had, I have about 5,000 street miles on them since this time last year, I put them on and they, they work, they work very well. I'm happy with them. I'm, I'm going to um, talk about my pads here. I think yeah. I, I like my pads a little better. I, I have switched to the power stop track day pads and um, which previously I used the Z26 pads, which were the low dust ones. And I did find their limitation on the track um, when they got really hot, when I really pushed them. So this year I went with the track pad, track day pads, and I love them. Um, they don't make much noise at all on the street. And, um, you know, of course there's the dust, but uh, not horrible um, and um, perform wonderful on the track. So. That's my recommendation. <laughs> there you go. But um, let's get to a couple questions here. Sure. Um, Steve asked or, or commented again. Uh, he did expel clear bra on his vet and ceramic on the entire body. Looks awesome. good though. So, um, and then Wendy asked. You mentioned street That's my speed. sister. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mentioned Street Speed 717. Have you met him? Um, I have met him actually twice. Uh, once uh, at Corvette's at Corlau and um, once in Pittsburgh when he, he came in. Um, yeah, cool guy. Um, um, definitely uh, loves his Corvettes as well. So, uh, yeah, um, definitely. Um, would like to meet up with him again at some point. Um, and then Steve asks, uh, which cold air intake was it worth it? I'm sorry? Uh, which cold air intake and was it worth it? Oh, it's the, the General Motors uh, Chevrolet Performance Z28 cold air intake. And yes, it was worth it. Uh, it is a little bit more expensive than some of the other aftermarket cold air intakes. Uh, fortunately, I, I can get a discount at my local General Motors uh, uh, dealership. My dad actually works part time at, so the the price didn't bite as much. But uh, it, it was worth it. I think it look it's the best looking one. That that isn't a criteria for most people, but I, I like I'm I'm a kind of guy that likes a little bit of a stock look on some mods, because uh, there's some uh, a certain symmetry there. Uh, right. It looks it, it looks like it it belongs there. Is it the uh, dry filter or is it oiled? 
It is a dry filter, yes. And that is the stock filter there. And from what I had read, mm -hmm. the K&N engineered this, designed it for General Motors. So whether there's any truth to that or not, but it is, uh, it is a dry filter. And it comes with the mass airflow sensor integral with it. Did, Easy mod to make. Did you uh, dyno it before the, the intake? No, no. Okay. no I've uh, dynoed it with the throttle body and uh, the cold air intake. All right. And then Autonut asks, why not just resurface the rotor and get another season out of them? Well, because the cracks are – they're they're deep. They They say that if you can get your fingernail on them, you you're you're done with them and that the the cracks radiate towards the outer edge and after this last track day they they walked up towards the the edge a little bit more i don't know if that would benefit or not I, i've never read anything on that um uh, i don't know that i'd want to take mass out of them in that sense because they may want to crack at a faster rate then uh and it may actually be harder to <laughs> To machine with the cracks that might be a little bit hard on the tooling so i don't know but that is a great question mm -hmm. um, yeah and yeah. I, I don't know if there's really a problem running them with the cracks um i think that happens to just about all race rotors and race setups with the with those metallic pads so yeah yeah hi marian <laughs> uh I'm saying hi to my neighbor there uh <laughs> yeah it's uh you know, he, uh, something I had thought about what we could talk about since the focus was a little bit on track days. I don't know that I would have the peace of mind with machining them and then going out and running. You know, I'm, I'm 123 at the end of the straightaways uh, and then wanting to jam on the brakes. With brakes, I want 100% confidence that they're going to be there for me because I've read too many stories of guys having issues, seen too many videos. And to me, I'm going to show you right here. This stuff right here is cheap insurance. Yes, it's more expensive than other brake fluid. But for me, that's cheap insurance. It's the best. All the major race uh, series in the world use it, including Formula One. And uh, I want 100% confidence in my brakes. And so, how often do you change your brake fluid? Well, with that Castro SRF, I don't do a full flush. I just burp, you know, burp the, the, the calipers. I will take the fluid out of the, the master cylinder with a, a syringe, mm -hmm. uh, as, you know, within reason, not completely drain it, but pull out some of the fluid there and then I'll put new in and then I'll, I'll bleed them. And I use a mode of 0108 power bleeder, one man operation. And I'll just, uh, I'll just burp the, the calipers. You can see the, the color change it's subtle but if you put heat into the the fluid it, they it does turn a little bit and uh, i will burp them and the pedal firms back up i mean if after this last track day they got a little bit soft you know just driving around the street here i could feel the little bit of softness so a tiny bit but after i would bleed them it would come right back never had uh Issues. I, I had an issue earlier this year. I think actually it was before I went to the Castrol, where I don't know if you remember Marco. We had a. It wasn't a red flag, but we had to come into the pits and we didn't get a cool down lap. And after that okay. session, my pedal was soft and and I didn't get a proper cool down of the brakes. But gotcha. it, anybody yeah. who's thinking about tracking out there, on on your list. Put good fluid in. That is the cheapest insurance you will ever have. Uh, even if you know you're not going to run super hard, get that 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 good fluid in there. Cheap insurance. It is the simplest mod you can make. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, and the Corvettes, it's goofy because from the factory, it comes with dot three fluid. And um, yeah, right. you, it actually says in the manual when you, for a track day to switch it out to dot four, which I have. And mm -hmm. I, I took it to the dealer to do the full flush uh, just to make sure it was all cleared out. But um, did the Camaro come with dot four or? No, here you can see I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the master cylinder. Same thing, dot three. Okay. Uh, on, on the Camaro, the 
clutch hydraulics is, are shared by the brake master cylinder. Uh, mm. I added uh, a, a separate clutch reservoir here. Just a, it's a Willwood seven ounce uh, container. Made my own bracket. The hose is actually a BMW part number. You can see the bracket there, just aluminum, a uh, little aluminum bracket. And I actually have the pattern on my build form. And so a lot of guys asked for them whenever I had posted on my form. And I said, man, I don't have the time to make these for everybody. So I just, I just put the pattern on, on my build. Guys can make them as they want. And I actually use a different fluid in that. Uh, I will also burp the clutch hydraulics. But I use Brembo's low compressibility right here got it on amazon i don't know that there is much of a change in the feel because a lot a lot of guys complain about the feel of these hydraulic clutches and and my camaro is no different yeah. buddies have gotten in it they're like ah, i don't like the clutch i'm like i completely agree the um the corvettes actually do have a separate reservoir from the mm -hmm. factory with dot four in it so and cool. and i just use that ranger method uh suck it out yes and then, uh put new fluid in and um you know, push the clutch in many times, just circulate it. So I did install a tick remote bleeder also, and it was easy to do without pulling the transmission. I have a little bit of info on my build post. Uh, it, it went in no problem. It does help to flush out the, uh, the clutch hydraulics. And how often do you do that? Not as often as the brakes. Uh, maybe a couple times a year. If I feel like the, the pedal feel is, is changing a little bit or the fluid starts to get dark. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of Gen 5 Camaros with the six-speed have had issues with the clutch pedal hanging up. Uh, I think there's a couple issues there. Some have installed stiffer clutch pedal return springs. I don't think that's the issue. I think part of it is is the... You know, there's a diaphragm underneath these caps, both of these caps here, especially the factory one I can show you here. Uh, there, you can see it's actually extended, and that was mm -hmm. probably because the, the, the fluid got hot at the track, and then as it cooled down, it, it pulled that, that diaphragm out. But that diaphragm actually has a little – here, it's going to be hard to see. But, yeah. Uh, right, right there. And I think that, that allows some purging if – I, I just think that there's a there's an issue there that causes that pedal to, to hang up. So I, I only had the only issue I ever had with the transmission in this was uh, third gear grind, which is common in these cars. Uh, up until recently, I had trouble getting it into third gear at the track. And I think that it's just uh, a little bit of hard use is is maybe affecting it. But otherwise, it's um. been great. Steve asks, what engine oil are you using? I use Mobile One Turbo Diesel 5W40. I use that in my 95Z28, a little more extra weight, and it has a higher zinc diphosphate uh, content. Uh, the zinc has been a topic of conversation lately because uh, the older cars with the flat tappet cams are all of a sudden wiping out cams. And that zinc phosphate is very important for flat tap of cams. It's also important at other points of contact within the engine. But the, the turbo diesels are pretty much, any of the diesel oils will have more zinc uh, in it. The, the, so it's um, a little more protection. On the Corvette, the, uh, the, the, they actually recommend the 15W50 oil for track use and that does have more zinc in it but they mm -hmm. they want you to take it out uh for road use but right. i don't i don't do that i just use a 10w30 uh mobile one and um yeah. now the the i, I was get to see the oil the temperatures oh yeah the, the reason they're uh, the manufacturers are taking zinc out of the oils because in the long run it affects catalytic converter Right. It's either catalytic converter or O2 sensor performance. And, and, you know, they're engineering these cars that go 100,000 miles. So they, they look at that. They, they want to be able to have the perfect emissions even after 100,000 miles. So there's no other detriment from what I understand. It's all about the emissions efficiency. 
what oil temperature did you get up to on the track? On these Gen 5 Camaros, the driver's information center on the instrument cluster, the oil temperature max is out at 266. Now, some uh, smart guys on the forums have, you know, actually checked the actual temperature with uh, thermocouples and have said it, it's going higher than the, the 266 max, which I, I would agree with easily because if you're running the car hard, 266 is, it would be kind of, amazing without a proper oil cooler so guys are seeing close to 300 wow um i see the 266 all the time i don't fret about it i, I believe i got a good oil in it uh, just yeah. uh it's one of the th those things that you, you kind of cross your fingers on if you don't have the proper oil cooler these cars have an oil heat exchanger i don't know that it does much for cooling mm -hmm. it's just a little sandwich adapter near the, the oil filter. I do have a ZL1 belly pan on this car and I cut out a, a hole for a NACA duct that blows air right on that heat, heat exchanger. I don't know that it helps much. I don't think it'll hurt. Uh, hmm. Just you know, I like to pay attention to the details and I thought uh, for minimal investment. I, I got my temp up to 262 this last track day, which you know the Corvettes do have an oil cooler. So um, I don't know if it's the same system, though, like, like you said, if it maxes out at a certain point. But the gauge definitely goes up to, well, like 320. I mean, it, and it turns, I think the, the red okay. area is like around 300 where it starts, you know, shows the red area. But hopefully um, it does actually measure it. But, yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure on that myself. I, I did put a cooler thermostat in. It's actual General Motors thermostat. Uh, to help the, the cooling. I did go to the 3070 uh, coolant ratio. Some of that stuff was recommended in the Z28 owner's manual. Uh, and also the, the, the hood vent has a drip tray in it. And I removed that. It was one of the first things I removed. Oh, recommended but, in the, the, but then the water the goes right on the manual. engine. Right, you could see the engine air. Yep. I try not to drive this vehicle in the rain. Of course, I wash it. But if you look, really study the GM weather pack electrical connectors, they're a pretty robust uh, connector as far as keeping water out. I've never, ever had an issue. Now, it's not like I'm blasting water right on the connectors or, or anything. So I, I just leave that, that uh, drip tray out all the time. Never had an issue. It's pretty neat to see the heat waves come out when you're sitting at a stoplight coming up out of the, <laughs> the hood there. Yeah, that's cool. Um, all right, let's get a couple more uh, questions I had. Um, so what is your favorite mod? <laughs> well, I, we could maybe break that down even further. As, as far as uh, cosmetic, it, it, I really like the flow tie. I got the Z28 flow tie with the Z28 grill. But the, the forge lines, it's hard to argue against those. The forge lines look amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are a performance benefit. Performance-wise, oh, I never did get to the suspension mods, but the Z, I have the Z28 springs and uh, DSSV struts with the Z28 front anti roll bar, and, a, and I kept the 1LE anti roll bar on the rear because it's just a little bit bigger than the Z28 rear. But that, that, those mods, the suspension mods, are probably my favorite as far as the uh, the dynamic or the performance mods. It it the one LE bone stock was amazing. It it just it was amazing. You you could just leave the one LE alone and be extremely happy. On the track, it needed a little bit more shock damping, and that was one reason I started looking. I actually had Ride Tech coilovers on this car at one time, and it was just a matter of chance that uh, I'm currently running the the Z28 stuff. But they are, it is a lot stiffer than the 1LE, the, the springs and the, the struts have a lot of rebound in them. But it is not, it is not, it, it will not jar the heck out of you. Our roads here in the Laurel Mountains of Pennsylvania are bad. Uh, so, you know, I'm driving on a lot of bad roads. Plus, we, our area is going through the sewer rehabilitation projects and are tearing up roads and they're not fixing them right. And that, that just adds to it. So this is but, not um, adjustable at all for 
damping or no. um, you know, right. Okay. Yeah, the, the the struts are not adjustable, which I do miss because the ride techs, uh, I adjusted on them, and, and you could feel the difference along with other coilovers that people people make. The Detroit Speed coilovers are the, the cat's ass. They are, they're big money. Um, Olin's also came out, I think it was sometime early this year, maybe late last year. They came out with a set of coilovers, adjustable. Mm-hmm. Not too many guys are using them, uh, but th- their price is, is less than the D- Detroit Speed. But as far as, uh, you know, this a GM engineered product. It's an excellent, excellent package. Like I said, it rides stiff, but it feels great. I'm, I think I, I need to adjust how I drive. I, I think you could toss this car a lot more with this setup. And uh, I did exploit that a little bit there in, in our last session, Marco. Mm-hmm. At the track, well, uh, I'm I'm sure with the with the larger wheels and tires, you need you need to adjust the suspension as well because of the in, increase in grip. So you're going to be right, definitely, uh, you know, leaning more and yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's um, that's a good setup there. And I do have brake cooling. There's some brake cooling here also. I have the Z28 ducts in here, which only dump into the wheelhouse. And then the quantum dumped it up. And I, I don't want 28 ducks. I, I just took the fog lights out and made these up. It, it's supposedly not the best spot to pick up air, but uh, I have not experienced any cooling issues. Yep. So, Actually, the uh, Corvette has it in the front grill as well. So mm, okay, similar spot. So, I mean, maybe a little bit farther in. But yeah, so. Okay, let me ask you another question. Um, have you had any issues with the car either because of mods or not because of mods? The stock. Uh, I'd say no. The car's been pretty robust. Uh, I only took it. I took it to the dealership for the sill plate emblem was starting to roll up a little bit after I first got it and they replaced it. No questions asked. They did a good job this year. Mm. And uh, I, I, and here's a common problem with the Recaros, the seatbelt. I don't know if you could see it. There's a right here and it actually started wearing into oh wow the, yeah. the threads here and it's pulled up some. And I, I went to, to uh, Memorial Highway Chevrolet, and they said that they'd replace the, the seat cover. And it is out of warranty, doing that as a courtesy. Other guys have had the same issue. So uh, otherwise, you know, I mentioned the third gear uh, the, at the last track day. Mm-hmm. It uh, was giving me a little bit of fits not going into third gear when I was downshifting. So I'm not sure exactly. And the fluid is fresh. I did. I changed the fluid to Redline ATF, D4 ATF here recently. Uh, otherwise, the car's been bulletproof. You know, General Motors gets a, has had a bad reputation along with some of the other big three American car makers, but that that's come and gone. Uh, they're making all three car makers are making great products. I think, you know, I'm biased. I'm a GM guy. I've had one non GM vehicle. Uh, and the Gen 5 Camaro is a great platform. Yes, it's heavy. Yes, it's hard to see out of, which I don't have that issue. If I had to get another option, it would have been the rear camera. Backing up is a little difficult, but if you're patient, you're okay. Uh, right. The, the car, it's an amazing car. My favorite car by leaps and bounds. Um, it gets so many looks, so many thumbs up. Kids get excited over the look of it. You know, they, they know it is Bumblebee, and that's not why I bought it. Uh, but, you know, they talk about today's younger generation doesn't have a thing for cars. Cars like your Corvette and, and this car and the Mustang and, you know, the GTR, uh, Nissan, and, and a whole bunch of enthusiast cars, they're, they're captivating younger younger kids. So, when you see, see young kids up, that that's cool. You know, they'll they'll never forget that car. Absolutely, yeah, I, I agree with that. 
Um, and then there we have another question here. How, uh, Steve asks, how fast have you had the car? <laughs> 140 is the fastest I've ever gone. And that's actually the fastest I've ever gone in any of my performance cars. I don't know why that number, maybe that's my, uh, the little angel on my shoulder saying, okay, that's enough. But, <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it, it's rock solid, stable at 140. I don't need to go any faster than that. And then I did that once and I'm not going to do it again. It's just one of those things, but I'm not going to ask where maybe Mexico. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but it's, yeah, it, it, the older you get, the, the, the more you ask why, you know, but uh, I'm not sure what, I actually don't know what the top speed is on the car. It, you know, it's not the most aerodynamic car out there. So it, it may be even less than, I think my 95 Z28 had a 157 top speed. It might be less than that for all I know. And the tuning probably, uh, removed any speed limiter or anything. I'm not even sure. It, it may it not have had a speed limiter. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Steve said 143 for me. The wife made yeah. me slow down. Yeah, I bet. Uh, <laughs> I would have never done that. that with yeah. <laughs> I've never done that with my wife in the car. She knows when I'm going 10 over. <laughs> right. Um, so you daily drive the car? Yeah. Whenever it's nice out. And the temperatures are, you know, 45 degrees or so. Because, well, with the stock good years, there actually is, they don't want you driving on, on them below 40 degrees because they will actually crack. Uh, talking to a Goodyear engineer that does go out to the track, Craig, if you're out there, uh, the, the, the rubber actually freezes is the best way to describe it. And, and if you look online, you can find pictures of the tires that are cracked. They're actually a fracture. It's not a, uh, a fine crack or anything but so and not to mention they don't have much grip when they're cold but just uh whenever it's nice i have almost twenty one thousand miles on the car and to in you know we get pretty hard winters up here in the the mountains and for driving it maybe six months out of the year since june of 14 that's putting miles on but i i enjoy the heck out of it every turn of the steering wheel is pure enjoyment uh I just, I just love driving it. Um, what don't you like about the car? I think you mentioned <laughs> a few things already, but. Uh, well, maybe, may, you know, yeah, the backing up, but if, if you're going to, if you want some pretty cool styling or some things, there's some trade-offs. I don't know. You know, they talk about the cheap interiors on this and yeah, that's a general motors thing. Uh, Something that some of the hard plastic scratch is too easy. That it even goes to my, my 10 Sierra here. They can come out with something that doesn't take the abuse, you know. And I try to be careful, but it happens. Uh, mm. It's a heavy car, but you know, the Gen 6 fixed that. The Gen 6 Camaros have lightened up significantly, they are a little bit smaller on the inside. Definitely. I test drove a 1 LE, but uh, I, I don't know if there's there's no car to me is perfect. Right. Uh, I, that, I, I really don't. The clutch, the clutch isn't, isn't very user friendly most of the time. Uh, I don't know. It, it's pretty darn, darn good. Okay. That leads me to my next question. What's next? Uh, <laughs> uh, Either what's the next car or next mod? Um, oh, there you go. Next maybe mod, maybe answer both. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next mod. You know, as much as the suspension, I'm very happy with the, those old those Olin's uh, coilovers would get me my drop. I mean, the car sits kind of high. You know, where the 19s make it look like it sits kind of high. That's not a big deal to me because it it makes more than makes up with it in it uh with how it, it drives and such Real, you know i don't know uh boy that's a hard question i don't know i i don't think i want to do much more the mm -hmm. brakes are great yep. just just buy tires and fuel and srf brake fluid <laughs> uh, i'm sure i can think of something maybe something to enhance the durability of the engine 
Uh, I don't know. It's it's pretty good right now. Without without going nuts on a, a big engine build. You know what? The biggest thing is I have to improve on the track. I I have a lot of room for improvement. I believe. Uh, make no changes and just pick up where I can. Right, driver mod. Yeah, driver mod. The the loosest nut is the one behind the wheel. <laughs> but and... as far as well, I was going to say, as far as another car, I really dig the new Gen Six One LEs. They're super fast. I mean, they're they're running faster than I am. And they're pretty much bone stock or maybe with just an alignment performance alignment. And I, I test drove one. It is smaller on the inside. Of course, there's some things I don't like about it and design type things, uh, but they're easily overlooked. I wasn't thrilled with the 14 refresh on these initially. I, I, I always loved the, the nose on the 14 refresh, but the tail, I had a hard time getting past, but it's grown on me. Uh, a little bit of a throwback to the 69 there, a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I will say, too, the headlights when, or I'm sorry, the taillights when they're on, they have a lot of depth to them. It, it's kind of hard to see. I could turn them on, but uh, it was it was a, a pleasant surprise that, to see that. Are there any tracks that you'd like to um, take the car on that you haven't yet? Yeah, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, yeah, you've just been to pit race, right? For track yeah, driving. Yeah, I've only been to pit race. Uh, Virginia VIR would, would would be pretty cool. Watkins Glen, Mid Ohio, yeah, you know, all the big big name stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I, I said, I, I, I there's a lot I can improve on. And going to a new track, you're starting from scratch, but you at least have a confidence in the car and know what it's it can do. Yeah, pretty much all of them. As far as the local, would be VIR, Mid Ohio, Watkins Glen. VIR would be pretty cool. Definitely. Um, how much have you spent in mods? <laughs> I hope my wife's not watching. Uh, <laughs> too much i think that uh, i don't know i think any of us that are deep automotive enthusiasts we have a passion for vehicles and we don't maybe think twice about spending crazy numbers on some mods right that's uh, our hobby I, I yeah there there was an article in carcraft magazine years ago it was it was a a guy that built up a, a gtx uh, Mopar and they had to quote on one of the pictures and it said uh, they, they basically asked the fellow how much he spent and he said uh, he has a whole big box of receipts and he, he's not going to add them up and, and the follow up to that quote was uh, that gentleman's a smart guy never add up your receipts because <laughs> I think it would it would make you question uh, your passion but I don't know. It, it's hard to, I'm not even going to do it. it right, it's, right. It's something you, you play with it. You make it your own. Z28 Absolutely. stuff. I got a pretty good price on eBay. The, the forge lines were secondhand. Cool dude. Dan from, from Florida had a Z28, a silver Z28 that he had gotten rid of and had these forge lines. He actually hand delivered them because he has, uh, his daughter actually lived up in, uh, Buffalo, New York, and he was coming to visit her, and I waited a few weeks, and he came right to my doorstep with him. So nice. it was great to meet him and his wife, and it was it was a pretty cool situation. Nice. But uh, so yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's uh, that's a tough question, but figured yeah. I throw it in. Sure. Um, and then Steve <laughs> asks, um, do you put your car up on jacks for winter stores, or just air up the tires? That's a great question for any automotive enthusiast that stores their cars, I pump up the tires and I never did anything. I have a heated garage, but of course the floor gets kind of cold, especially in the deep of winter. And in the past with these stock Goodyears, I've experienced flat spotting in the spring. And, and I, you know, they, they would put the tire on the tire machine and spin and you could see the flat spots. Like no wonder I can feel it. <laughs> so this past winter, 
Yeah. Are those run flats? Winner. No, they are not run flats. Okay. Because I was going to say, I, uh, I, I never had a problem with mine. I, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and I'm assuming it's because the low profile and the run flats. I never had flat spots on mine. Yeah. Well, you know, I think these, these F1s here, they're a pretty soft compound. They need a lot of heat to, to really make the soft compound. Maybe flat spots easier. I have one of those vinyl floor mats in my garage. It's the coin pattern. And when mm. I back the car out, I could see where the tires were sitting on that coin pattern. It leaves little indentation. So that little bit of indentation or a little bit of a pattern on the floor would leave its mark on the tire. Now, eventually it goes away. But this past winter, and, and I just got these the, the, this 19-inch setup this uh, summer. But this past winter, I did pump up the Goodyears, and I did not have an issue. So pumping them up, I, I believe, definitely helped. You know, my garage is, is where the car sits, and it's kind of a workshop, and it's heated, like I said. So I, I like to see the car. You know, I walk, come through that door and I like to see it. And I don't want to see it jacked up. You know, I, I just want to see it in its natural state, I guess. That's the cheesiest way to put it. So <laughs> Exactly. I, I would, yeah, I wouldn't think about jacking them up. But, I mean, that, that is a, a viable option. But I just yeah. pumped up the tires and didn't have an issue this year. All right. I think that uh, about wraps it up. Um, thanks, Chad, for joining us and showing your car. Um, sure. If you, if anyone has any more questions or wants to see more details, uh, Chad's links are below. And um, you can check out all of his uh, build on the uh, Camaro 5 form. Um, yep. Also, um, Tom Gear has... Uh, um, come on the chat and um, he feels a little Hi, left out because um, he <laughs> wants to show his car, I'm sure. But that brings me to a good point. Um, anybody, uh, we can do definitely do this more often. And if you have a car that you want uh, featured and we can do a live stream, people can uh, see your car and ask questions. Definitely hit me up. Probably um, Instagram is probably the best way to send me a message on Instagram. And uh, we could set something up. Um, Tom Gear is certainly welcome um, to show one of his cars, whichever one he he wants, and he has several to choose from. Also, um, Auto Nut, um, he was on earlier, and um, I'd like to do one with his GTO as well because he has several um, mods and and things he's done to that car. So. Um, Definitely want to um, get him on there as well. But like I said, um, hit me up if you want uh, want me to do one on yours, and we can definitely set it up. Um, Dominico, sh- hey Dominico, shout out to you! Uh, I saw you just commented. Um, also, we're gonna try to do a uh, uh, exhaust exhaust oh, clip yeah. with Chad here uh, before he goes. And uh, oh, Steve says, love Camaros. My first new C28 was in 1969. Awesome. Uh, Got to go for a ride. Uh, he he got to get out of here, but thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks Steve, for participating today. But, yeah, we're going to do the exhaust right now. Nice. And, and just to remind everyone... This is the stock NPP exhaust, but you did do the uh, fuse trick, right? right Chad? Yes, I pulled the number eight, if I remember correctly, number eight fuse out of, uh, it's in the trunk area, it controls the solenoid, the solenoid controls the vacuum for the actuator. But the fuse is pulled, so the NPP exhaust is wide open 100% of the time. I think a lot of people need to understand that catalytic converters will take some of the sound away. That's, way, that's how they can get away with this type of exhaust nowadays without it being too crazy on the, on the highway. There's, there's zero drone. Uh, yep. it, it sounds great. Of course, my neighbors probably don't like the exhaust. <laughs> uh, I yeah, I definitely, I um, I recommend that as well. I have a video on the channel on, on the Corvette, uh, which views the pool and also have the mild to wild switch as well, but, um, definitely cool mod. And it, it is really loud enough. I mean, um, yes, People do delete the cats. 
Um, the second Eric Katz, anyway. I'm thinking of doing that, but um, yeah, it sounds pretty good stock on these uh, later GM performance cars. So yes, but anyway, yeah, let's uh, wrap it up here. We're at an hour. Um, again, thanks, Chad, for showing us your car. It's an awesome sure. car, and uh, I enjoyed you. enjoyed um, racing with you on the track this year. Yeah. And uh, you pushing me along while well, pulling me along because you were in front of me most <laughs> of the time. So, <laughs> you're, you're, Marco so. is a fast driver, and, and shout out to Tom. Tom Gear, he is a, 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 an amazing driver. He's, he's, he's a crazy fast. driver. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah, we got to get Auto Nut down here at Pit Race sometime. That'd be awesome. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, next year, maybe we're going to do uh, advanced because. Well, Tom Gear in our last session was in advanced. Uh, we were both uh, Chad and I were in intermediate, so we couldn't race together. But um, maybe we'll try to do advanced next year because no one yeah. no one passed us. So it was Chad yeah. and I at the beginning. So I've I've been in advanced before, and you know, it, uh, you do more mirror watching if you're not the fastest car because there's a lot better drivers and, and better cars in that group. Intermediate, I always thought, well, maybe I can get more clear track. It didn't work out this way this last uh, time that you and I are in the inter intermediate. And Tom, it worked out great for Tom in advance, uh, starting at the rear and just having lots of clear track. Uh, so, yeah, that, that would be cool. Yep. And, I mean, the thing with advance, you, 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 there's passing anywhere in a track, which, which gets a little hairy sometimes. That's the only thing I don't like about advance, but I've never run in advance either. So, you yeah. know. Yeah. But all right, guys. Well, again, thanks for joining us today. If you have any questions, you can also comment below on the video and um, we'll monitor that and answer your questions. And uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel, Chad's channel, um, Instagram, all that fun stuff. All the links are below. And we'll close it out today. Have a good weekend and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys. See you guys.